welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, in a very windy Spain. So if you hear some noises in the background, it's just everything creaking outside. Today, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I for On This Day in Tudor History, the 10th of December, 1591. Roman Catholic priest Edmund Jennings and Catholic Swithin Wells were executed on a scaffold set up outside Wells's house at Hoburn. Let me tell you a bit more about these two Catholic martyrs, Saint Edmund Jennings and Saint Swithin Wells. Edmund Jennings was born in Lichfield in Staffordshire in 1566 and was the son of innkeeper and bailiff John Jennings. He was brought up as a Protestant, but when he was 14, he became a page to Richard Sherwood, a Catholic, and acted as a messenger between Sherwood and a man named James Leyburn, a Catholic who was imprisoned in Lancaster. When Sherwood told Edmund of his plans to leave England and train for the priesthood in Reims, Edmund decided to join him. In August 1583, when he was 17, Edmund was admitted to the seminary college at Douai. While studying there, he was taken ill with suspected consumption and sent home. He got as far as Le Havre, but then prayed and was healed, so returned to Douai, where he was ordained in March 1590. Edmund was a very serious and pious young man. His biographer, Christine J. Kelly, writes that the intensity of his meditations on the responsibilities of priesthood induced a shaking of his body like a palsy that remained with him all his life, yet he spoke constantly of his hope of becoming a martyr. In April 1590, just weeks after being ordained, Edmund set off for England, accompanied by two other priests. Their journey was rather eventful, with them being robbed, captured for a time by Huguenots, attacked by pirates and encountering a storm at sea but they eventually landed at Whitby on the Yorkshire coast. Edmund travelled on to his home at Lichfield, but on finding that only his younger brother John was still alive and had moved to London, he made his way to the capital. However, when he did find John, his brother didn't want anything to do with him because of his faith. Edmund stayed on in the city working as a priest, and on the 2nd of November, 1591, he was in Hoburn at Swithin Wells' house celebrating the mass when the famous priest finder and torturer, Richard Topcliffe, found him. Topcliffe was injured in the subsequent struggle with members of the congregation who wanted the priest to finish mass. But Edmund and his fellow priest, Polydor Plasden, surrendered peacefully and were escorted with members of their congregation to Newgate Prison. Swithin Wells had not been present at the Mass, but was arrested the following day when he visited the prison in an attempt to get his wife released. Wells was a Hampshire man who'd been a tutor to Henry Risley, 2nd Earl of Southampton, and he'd been a schoolmaster. He'd come under investigation in the early 1580s for his Catholic sympathies and had been forced to give up his school. He'd moved to London in 1585, where he became known for supporting priests. He'd been in prison briefly in 1586 after being implicated in the Babington plot and was examined in 1587, but managed to avoid serious trouble until 1591. On the 4th of December, 1591, Edmund, Swithin, Polydor Plasden and several others were tried at Westminster Hall, the priests for treason and the laymen for felony. Following his trial, Edmund Jennings was apparently offered a deal by Topcliffe, his life in exchange for conforming to Protestantism. Edmund refused, at which point Topcliffe had him put into the Little Ease, a tiny cell that made it impossible for Edmund to stand, sit or lie down. On this day in history, the 10th of December 1591, Edmund Jennings and Swithin Wells were drawn to Wells's house at Hoburn. There, Edmund suffered a full traitor's death, being hanged, drawn and quartered, and Wells was hanged. While suffering, Edmund was said to have called upon St Gregory for help, upon which the executioner cried, God's wounds, his heart is in my hand, and yet Gregory is in his mouth. And now we have Oreo just checking that I'm doing everything right. I think I am Oreo. 
So courageous was Edmund Jennings at his execution that his brother John, who witnessed it, converted to Catholicism and wrote a biography of Edmund. Edmund's fellow priest, Polydor Plasden, was also executed on this day in 1591, being hanged, drawn and quartered at Tyburn. He was lucky in that he was hanged until he was dead and the rest of his punishment was carried out on his dead body. In October 1970, Pope Paul VI canonised Swithin, Edmund and Polydor as three of the 40 martyrs of England and Wales. And I think Oreo is very interested in their fates there. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a future Queen's arrival and lavish reception at Graveline near Calais and what happened when her sailing onto England was postponed. Do make sure you're subscribed. You can click just there and Oreo really wants you to do that and that you've hit the bell as well so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 10th of December 1541, Thomas Culpepper and Francis Derham were executed at Tyburn. They'd been found guilty of high treason for intending to do ill with Queen Catherine Howard. That is to say, intending to commit adultery with her and had been sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered. Derham suffered the full traitor's death while Culpepper was beheaded. You can find out more about what happened in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like if you've enjoyed this talk. I think Oreo deserves a like, don't you? And do leave a comment if you wish. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.